Okay. Yes. The, the magnitude of SH min and um, the defit itself can't, won't uh, determine where the fractures propagate, but other diagnostic tools, well logging tools, can determine the direction. Calipers, tele, televiewers, you can actually see it, right? And then if you know uh, where they initiate from or where, which direction they're growing, then you, you know, that's, that's in the direction of SH max. So did you guys cover this in geology, Anderson fault classification? Yeah. So uh, this is just a convention used to order the principal stresses, OK? And they're ordered according to what type of faulting system that ordering of principal stresses would accommodate, OK? I don't love this. Uh, you know, I think I'm an engineer, and I can compute the, the stresses on a fault, and therefore I don't need some very vague convention uh, to tell me what the ordering is. I, I, I can just compute or measure the actual order, and then I, and I know what it is. I don't need to give it some name. I mean, the problem is you have to know this because it's ubiquitous in literature. You know, people will write just oh it was a, it was a normal faulting regime. They won't even say Anderson normal faulting regime. They'll just say it was a normal fault, you know, the stress state was a normal faulting regime and just continue the sentence. And they expect you to know that that means that the vertical stress is the greatest SH max, SH min. They just expect you to know that. And so in order to sort of work in the industry and read papers and stuff, you have to know this, this terminology, right? So an Anderson normal faulting regime, the vertical stress is the, ma is the maximum and SH max by SH min, right? So the reason being, this is the sort of faulting regime in which this ordering of principal stresses would accommodate, right? If if the the vertical stress is greater than the two horizontal stresses, that's going to force the hanging wall down, right? And that's going to be a normal faulting regime. Right? And so the opposite of that is a reverse faulting regime in which the vertical stress is the lowest. And of course, you know, SH max is always greater than SH min, by definition. Right? It's the maximum and the minimum horizontal stresses. So really, you just have to remember where in the ordering the vertical stress goes. Right? So it's greatest for normal faulting, and then just think reverse, right? If you could just remember that, right? It's greatest for normal faulting, the reverse of that or sort of the opposite, if you will, is that the vertical is the least. So that's the reverse faulting regime. And then the one in between is the strike slip. So you know, in summary, you have a table like this. And again, just remember, when you, you know, if you, in your mind, if you can recreate this table, the vertical goes along the diagonal. And then you just order the two blanks, SH max and SH min. And then normal is the first, reverse is the last, and then strike slip is in the middle. Yeah? Do what? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a great picture. What I'm trying to convey there is that it's it's in the SH max is in the plane of, of this arrow. It's in that plane, right? So maybe I should have like connected them with an angle or something. So that while it's drawn vertically, it's not vertically. It's in the plane of the horizon, right? But what I didn't want to uh, you know when, you know I said I took this figure and then I put the blue bars on there. What I what I didn't want you to think is that you know somehow SH max has to be aligned with the fault in some way, right? It, it, can, it can be in any plane 
of the horizon, right? As long as there's some component pushing along the fault, you know, as long as it's not completely normal, uh, you know, as long as SH max is not completely normal to it, then you could have some strikes at fault in some motion, right? No, no, again, it's not, it's, it's not pushing up, right? It's, it's in this plane, right? So I should, I should probably have tilted this arrow a little bit. There's some component pushing along the, along the fault in this direction, per, parallel to the fault. fault. Uh, in, in this case, it's not, th again, there's no, this is in the horizon. Th this is in the plane of that, right? It's in the horizon. There's no vertical component to SH max. By definition, it's, it's SH, the H stands for horizontal. Right? There's, no, there's no vertical component. Right? So I, I should probably try to fix this figure. I just didn't want to draw the blue line that way to and give you the impression that SH max is always sort of parallel to the fault. So it has to be some component of SH max along the fault, but it could also be a, a, a component normal to the fault. Yeah. 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 It could be at any angle in that plane. It's it's horizontal, right? It has to be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely not the best way to draw that. Okay. So that's the summary of your Anderson fault classification, and uh, I just want you to know. I mean, the next homework assignment we're gonna. We're going to, you know, actually resolve stresses on faults and determine if the fault slips, okay? And it may be that that locally, right? So you could have some stress state that appears to be one of these regimes: normal, strike, slip, reverse. But then locally on the fault, it it doesn't exactly work out. You know, w once we compute, resolve the the actual forces on the fault, we'll be able to know exactly which direction the fault's going to slip, right? I exactly what angle. Right? It's going to slip, you know, at an angle that's 57 degrees from, from the hor horizontal and the normal, but it's also going to have some strike slip, whatever, right? So we're going to be able to compute the actual sort of whether a fault will slip, and if it does slip, its actual direction of motion. And, that, and it may not always align with the norm with the Anderson fault classification, and that's it can be associated with the fact that um, you know the Anderson classification is for these sort of far field and situ stress state, and it, and it doesn't really take into any consideration the actual orientation of the fault or the way that the stresses can be locally on the fault, right? And that's why I don't like so much this this. Classification because it, you, you might confuse you. you. Well, it's supposed to be strike slip, and then you find out it's mostly normal, but <laughs> there's a little strike slip or something like that. So, remember, the key thing to, to take away from this is the Anderson classification is really just a terminology of ordering of the principal stresses. Later, when we actually compute the stresses on faults, you can you can you know don't worry about how the actual fault motion is with respect to its Anderson classification. You know, believe, trust that what you compute is correct.